Hello, I'm Kim Sirius and welcome to In The Garden. You know, Adelaide is a true garden city. From the green heart of Victoria Square, past the magnificent tree-lined parklands, to our plant-filled suburbs, we love our gardens. And I love showing you how to keep them looking great this autumn. What to plant, how to do it, and more great garden advice to keep you in the garden, coming up right now. The Flat Adelaide Plains are home to some of South Australia's largest plant growers, producing millions of potted plants each year. And nurseries like Living Colour here at Penfield are fascinating places to visit to follow a plant's journey from grower to you. Specialising in potted colour plus flowering and vegetable seedlings, Living Colour is a state-of-the-art nursery. The place is carpeted in a sea of plants all at varying stage of growth. Ultimately, finding their way to the packing shed and into your local garden centre. With Mother's Day just around the corner, there's one job that has to be done, and that's disbudding the chrysanthemums. Joanna, what are you doing here? I'm actually taking all the side buds out so the flower has got the energy to bloom, ready for Mother's Day. So all the energy for this plant ends up in these top buds? Exactly. And this will be a stunning plant come Mother's Day? Absolutely. Well, I've picked out a nice selection of veggie and herb seedlings and I'm going to drop these into my mate Milton Vidoulis. So, off to beautiful historic Gawler. The award-winning Vidoulis Garden Centre opposite the race course has been an institution for Adelaide plant lovers for over 50 years. Delivery for Mr Milton Vidoulis. Oh. I've been waiting for that. How are you, Kim? Not bad, mate, but what are you going to do with this lot? Well, you know, all of my customers are growing their veggies, herbs and flowers in pots. So I thought we'd pot them up. We? Well, when I said we, I sort of thought you. I'll live with that. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, the secret to success when growing plants in pots is two things. Get the right size pot and a really good premium potting mix. Now, as a rule of thumb, get a pot large enough to take one large bag of potting mix. If you've ever used these, these are water crystals and they're like insurance for your plants should your pot ever dry out or the soil dry out. A teaspoon mixed with 750 mils of water will hydrate the tiny crystals, swelling them to hundreds of times their size. Plant roots grow through these and take out water as they need. Great for garden planting or pots, add a slop in the bottom of the planting hole. You know, herb pots are really popular these days and it's a really good idea to have several of the same pots so you can swap them over in the kitchen every week. Well, it saves you going out on those cold winter nights, doesn't it? Oh, sure does. Now, it needs a feed and did you know that Thrive is 50 years old this year? No way. I reckon my mum's got an old pack in her shed. <laughs> oh, I'll let you water it in. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, herbs, vegetables and flower seedlings love a good feed. Use a liquid fertiliser, it does the trick. Mix and water in well over the plants. And once everything's watered and fed, time to put them outside for the bugs. We don't want to be feeding them, and slugs and snails will be the first ones at them. So a little sprinkle of some snail bait, and for those chewing insects, something brand new. Yes, Kim, this is just out on the market. It's called Success Ultra. It's made from a natural soil bacteria, great for chewing insects. And also, coddling moth. Yes. And pear and cherry slug. Good to keep. Don't these look good? They sure do, Kim. You know, it's really easy when you get the right pots, the right soil and the right plants. I love coming to your garden centre, Milton. Is it for my conversation or my great plants? It's actually your cafe. Oh! Now's the time to be thinking about adding late winter and early spring colour to your garden. And the way to do that is with one of these. They're bulbs. They're the batteries of the plant world. And they're simple to plant. Grab yourself a bulb cutter, make a hole, Lift it out, pop the bulb in, Bob's your uncle. More great gardening coming up after the break. This is the time of year we have to make the most from what falls from the sky. If you've got a rainwater tank, that's fantastic, but you can capture every drop that comes down the downpipe with a rainwater diverter. They're easy to fit 
and they're available at your local hardware store. Simply plug in the hose, the water comes down the downpipe, out, free water, great water smart technology too. If you've developed holes in your fertiliser bags and your rat sack bait container has got holes in it, hmm, you've got a rodent problem. To help reduce their impact, clean up piles of rubbish to limit any potential homes and pick up any fallen fruit and vegetables. Chooks are making a big comeback in the backyard and it's not just us that likes the eggs. Don't forget to collect them every day. Even with all that, rats and mice are around all year, but they're very active in wet weather. Now to control them, you've got to think like them. They don't call them cunning for nothing. You need two things, baits and traps. Sheepers. Reusable rodent bait stations are secure, pet safe and ideal outdoors and in. Turn the key and open the box. They come preloaded with wax bait blocks that you can easily replace. Now the rodent is attracted to the bait, heads in, has a nibble and then goes off to die. Now, where to place? We've all seen rats scooting along the fence railings at night. Secure a bait station here for a bit of takeaway as they scurry along. Most sheds aren't palaces, so there's plenty of spots for rodents to nest. The old bean bag, pillows and blankets. Use a bait station or a trap station with a trap inside the box that you set and close. Personally, I'd put both in. It's important to keep rats and mice out of our homes, but when they arrive, you need to act fast. Here are some tips. If you're into traps, then buy strong and reusable rat and mice size ones. Don't worry about the cheese. Peanut butter is an excellent rodent attractant. These traps are so easy to use. One touch to set and dispose. Where you place your traps is very important. Mice are particularly shy and tend to scuttle along the skirting board. So set your trap, trap side in, one step, and they're gone. If you just don't want to touch anything, lay a disposable no-touch bait station along the wall. Once the bait's gone, it's gone. There's an arsenal of mice and rat solutions at your hardware store. My advice is, act now. The early trap catches the mouse and rat. What is it about hose-end fittings that we never replace when they get to this stage? I don't know. Part of the reason is as we're pulling the hose, it kinks and creates a lot of pressure in there. Well, there's an English company called Hoselock who've been involved with hosing connectors for 50 years that have turned evolution on its head and added a tail. Easy to attach, this tail stops the hose from completely kinking at the tap, which reduces the pressure and strain on the fitting and any likelihood of it blowing off. Now, these hosing connectors come in both plastic and metal and this Aquastop model means that you can change your fittings without getting wet. Now they're rippers and they're both available at Mitre Tenor Masters, as is this beauty. You don't win product of the year at Chelsea Flower Show for nothing. It's called the Flexi Spray and it does exactly that. The shank can be twisted and bent into any shape for any watering job and its adjustable nozzle gives four different spray patterns. You can even turn down the pressure when you're watering delicate plants by just adjusting this red knob. And for those hanging baskets and hard to reach pots, not a worry. This will keep both feet on the ground and you safe. I reckon this is a ripper. G'day, Snowy here from Mix102.3. It's now time to get into your garden and start digging in some well-aged manure. And I've got plenty of it. You'll find out more real soon after the break on In The Garden. Sprinklers have been keeping our lawns going for years and while some have been a little wasteful, new technology is saving us loads of water and money. 
The new low flow sprinkler applies water quite differently. Using a fraction of the water of a conventional vortex sprinkler, it throws at a low 10 degree angle, so water isn't caught by the wind and reaches a diameter of up to 10 metres. More low flow sprinklers can be added to water even larger areas. This little yellow sprinkler with a solid metal base even works directly off a rainwater tank without a pump. For more information on the low flow sprinkler and your nearest stockist, check out the website. Watering just got smarter. What would gardens be without plants? Bare and desolate, I'd expect. Now, there are plenty of new plants and old reliables that grow so beautifully in South Australian gardens. How are you, Kim? Milk, good. What do you got there? Well, this is a new Nandina called Red Hedge. So what's the difference between that one and the old Nandina? Ah, the old Nandina used to have bare legs, you know, when it grows, mm -hmm. nice bare, bare legs. This one covers all the way to the ground. It's going to be a beaut hedge. What a great idea. And I've got another new one here. It's called Obsession. Now, everyone grows Nandinas for their red colour but they course, they only get red in the winter time. But Obsession has this red foliage throughout the season. Only grows about 60 centimetres, makes a perfect short hedge. Well, if anything I like, is I like Moon Bay. Mm. Moon Bay gets to about 80 centimetres, and I like that fine foliage on it. It's a ripper, isn't it? Yeah, it looks fantastic. And that colours up really red in the winter? It does indeed. OK, very much like this old-fashioned dwarf Nandinas. And you know what, Kim? If you want to start with the more established plants, you can buy these bigger plants in 250 mil pots. And you know what? It gives you that instant result. And another great group of plants are the Elite Series. Why are they called Elite? Because they are selected for their high performance. Let's have a look at a few of them. You have this beautiful Million Bells. Now you can see why they're called Million Bells. They're just massed with flowers. And you know what? These make fantastic hanging basket plants. And what about these Osteospernums? Look at the gorgeous colours. Pinks and lavenders and yellows. Just beautiful. And you know what? They're very, very tough. And what about Easter daisies? Nothing gives you colour in the garden at Easter time better than these. You'd have to be un-Australian not to want one of these in your yard. It's the RSL rose. And this beautiful bush produces masses of these rich burgundy and amber blooms. Great as a cut flower and you can plant it in the ground or in a pot. Check them out at your local garden centre or online. And part proceeds from each sale go to help the RSL. All the garden centres around the state are absolutely chock-a-block full of great plants that are ready to plant now. North, south, east and west, up at Gawler, Vidulis Garden Centres. Of course, down yeah. south at the Flurio Garden Centre. Wherever your local garden centre is, get in there now this autumn. Great time to plant. The Adelaide Hills are a joy to visit, not only for their fantastic autumn hues, but to catch up with one of Mix 102.3's brilliant breakfast team, Jason Snowy Carter. The only problem is, I'm trying to find him. <laughs> Snowy. Yeah, okay, mate, I'll just, just... <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on! <laughs> Good gardeners have their hands dirty. Exactly. <laughs> How are you? Good, mate. Um, who's our friend? This is Big Ben. Ben Hur. Um, ben was a grand champion way back when he was a little fellow, when he was a bit smaller. He's about 950 kilos at the moment. And he is a resident bull. Murray Gray? Murray Gray, that's right. Exactly right. So uh, he's been here for nine years, ever since he was born. So he just waltzes around and eats everything and produces my manure from my garden. Fantastic. <laughs> so he's got a job. He's got a job. Uh, let's have a look at your garden. Sure, do you want to wash your hands first? Uh, good idea, mate. Good idea. See me. <laughs> Snowy, you can't get sick of this view, can you? Not at all, mate. It is one of the most amazing views to come home to. Now, your garden? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no, no, that's OK. OK. A, look, a, a weed is something growing in the wrong spot. Yep. That's in the wrong spot. Okay. So that is actually a weed, <laughs> so you need that. Need to get I was in positive there. I should have put it English there. English box, they, mm. look, they're very traditional, having the hedge there. They need a bit of a feed right now, so dynamic lifter straight yep. on them. And yep. if you want to keep them nice and bushy, just take out the tips. But you can see they're hungry. You know that, that little light colour compared to that colour there. Mm -hmm. um, they are hungry. What's out the back? It's my little toy. It's my little hobby. We've um, when we bought the farm, we got a little business called the Handel Farm Barn, and oh, yeah. I'd love to show you my other garden. Okay, lead on. It's just a barrel, but geez, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So welcome to the Handel Farm Barn. This is our, our, our business. We bought this place about three and a half years ago. 
Excuse me, quiet please. Um, with it, actually, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. He loves it most of my jokes. Um, but yeah, we're, we're a 22 acre farm about 15, 16 years ago. This was started up by, believe it or not, the Farmer family. And we bought the business around about three and a half years ago and I've loved every single moment of it. So we're on about eight and a half acres in total that the public are allowed to go to. The farm itself is on 22 acres and we've got so many different animals. We've got the baby deers, the baby lambs, the baby calves, the ducks, and it's a, a great place, we believe, for families to come up seven days a week and have some family time and enjoy the farm life. Snowy, it's great to get the passion, mm -hmm. and you've obviously got that passion for, yep. for the animals, mm -hmm. and spreading that through South Australia, it's wonderful. That's the plan. We've been very fortunate. We've won the best tourism attraction in South Australia for the last two years in the running, and I believe it's because my wife and I, we really fully do love this place. We love being a part of it. It's not about having a business where we take people's money. It's about people coming here as a family and experiencing good times as a family. Put your hand out over here. We do a wildlife show where they actually get to handle, you know, wild reptiles, you know, live pythons, and they get to put those around their neck and, and understand that we all need to learn to live together and at the same time respect each other. And seeing someone for the first time hold a python when they've been so scared, but then to actually hold it for the first time and realise it's it's not that bad. That that's a buzz for me. I love that. <laughs> it's been wonderful to catch up. Thank you, mate. Thank you, you so much for coming up. You're an icon and a legend. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. Thank you. No, no worries. Just pay, by the way, too, when you leave. Oh, come on. Usually, it's uh, $14. Can somebody lend me some money? I'm watching. Hi, my name's Damien Hoff. I'm the head curator here at the Adelaide Oval. My gardening tips to maintain a perfect lawn is to get rid of the weeds more gardening tips after the ad break. I think lawns are one of the most underrated parts of the garden. We expect them to look good all the time, but what do we do to help? Well, autumn's the time to set up your turf for the rest of the year. Start with the mower. No need to scalp the grass now. Lift the mowing height up a notch or two. Keeping the turf blades a little longer will keep the grass lush and healthy over the coming months. If you're looking at tough water-wise lawns to grow, then buffalo, kaikuya and cooch, like this fantastic Santa Rana cooch, are the way to go. Hard wearing and easy to grow? That gets the big tick. One thing all turf needs right now is feeding. Grab yourself an organic based lawn food and spread away. Pulsing nutrients slowly is what organics are all about. And if you spread out the fertiliser before a rain, then you won't need a water in. Lawn beetles can be devastating to any lawn as they chomp through grass roots and leave unsightly patches on the grass. Thankfully, there's an easy click-on solution to complete insect control. Keep up a regular program beginning in autumn for controlling those grubs and bugs in your lawn. Looking after a piece of lawn this size is one thing, but what about something bigger? The most iconic piece of South Australian turf has to be Adelaide Oval, and head curator Damien Hoff has the responsibility of keeping it looking its very best 12 months of the year. Damien, how long have you been at the Oval? Coming up to 18 years, so it started in, uh, in September 1996. And you would have seen some changes? Yeah, a lot. It's been good. You know, we've seen everything from pretty much the whole ground get redeveloped. So, yeah, started off with just the just the east, but um, I suppose over the last three or four years, we've seen pretty much the entire ground get fully reconstructed. And it looks fantastic. Are you happy? Yeah, it's world class, isn't it? Yeah, it's a uh, something that all South Australians should be proud of. What sort of turf have you got here? We've got two varieties, so it's pretty much a, a Santa Ana cooch uh, for the outfield and then come probably late summer we over sow that with rye grass and then get it up and uh, mature for the football. Was there anything special about the laying of this turf? It was important from our end to have a profile that was that could handle 12 months of the year um, sporting events. So what we've got is a profile that's that's a sand base and, and a gravel sort of base to it as well to, to be really free draining. So it drains you know in excess of 100 mil an hour, but it's got a, a mesh type of a, a reflex mesh element through the top, probably about 110 mil of the profile. So that just helps with the. I suppose it reduces the compaction and helps with, uh, in footy time, reducing the, the divoting side of things. So it just stabilises the top, 
What's a good tip for home gardeners to keep their lawn and looking as good as yours? Oh, what tips? Uh, put in a bit of uh, a bit of love really, isn't it? So keeping the water levels up and just have a nice uh, balanced fertiliser. You know, you want to look at look at any weeds. Uh, it doesn't matter what grass you've got, if you've got some, uh, some weed sort of species in there, try and get rid of them, whether it's hand digging them uh, or you, know, you can get a, a spray for most weeds these days. Purchase some of that and, and just put some, uh, some love into your lawn. No matter what size your lawn, big or small, they are an investment and it's important to get them ready before winter. You've got to love a lawn, don't you? Sadly, that's the end of our show and of our short series of In the Garden. I hope you enjoyed wandering around some brilliant local gardens, plus also looking at plants to grow right here in South Australia and tips on how to grow them. I'm Kim Cirrus. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you again in the garden.